Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the episode of Miles Edgeworth with Ace Attorney Investigations. In the last episode, we really cross-examined Sheena a lot and she appears to be Callisto Yu, except nobody's outright saying it, except it's pretty darn obvious that she's Callisto Yu, but whatever. But we were able to look into the room that she was in because that was the only room that Interpol had not investigated because that was the room she was in. And we found three items, all of which belong to her. So we are going to examine one of them and we are going to examine the coat. Let's examine the coat. Yes, sir! It appears you managed to stain your coat rather badly. Agent Sheena. The Atakarasu that Kay saw was wearing a coat, and I'm beginning to wonder if this stain wasn't created when you went through that fireplace. <laughs> no, you have it all wrong. That suit probably got on my coat when I was helping the police put out the fire. And what about this dark substance around the hem of your coat? Oh, I didn't realize that the hem was that dirty. I'm sure it's just some water mixed with soot from when I was helping with the fire. I don't think so. You think you can get away with such a transparent lie? Yeah, don't lie to us, pal! This is the same pattern of dirt that got on my coat when I went through the fireplace! Your words ring hollow in the absence of evidence, you know. So unless you can prove that the dirt on my coat is from the fireplace... Which I can. But... How? You did a great job, Detective Gumshoe. Huh? But me, sir? What did I do? This coat. This is exactly the piece of evidence I was searching for. I had been hoping to find the coat the person K saw was wearing. And thanks to you, we proved that going to the fireplace would sully a coat. I don't quite get what you're saying, but I'm happy for the praise, sir. All that remains is for us to show what the dark substance on the coat hem is. Oh? And you think you can do that? Of course I can. This is the dark substance that sullied the hem of this coat. Babali's ink? Yes. This is what will prove that the coat went through that fireplace. According to Ambassador Paleino, he burned some files in the fireplace this morning. You told us about that already, so I don't really see the point in mentioning it again. My point is that he spilled some ink onto the back wall of the fireplace at that time. If the dark substance on this coat turns out to be Bobbily's ink, it would prove that you and this coat went through the revolving fireplace wall. Ugh! Sorry to have clipped one of your wings, Yatakurasu, but we're not finished yet. But you have no way of proving whether or not this is Bobbily's ink on the coat hem. Oh, but I do. And I intend to show that it is ink in a few seconds. How? How, you ask? Well, since you don't seem to know, allow me to show you. This is how I will prove that the dark substance on this coat is Bobbily's ink. Burn the coat! We can find out whether that is Bobbily's ink or not by lighting it on fire. That's how you're gonna prove that it's Bobbily's ink? Yes. If you could please cut out a section of the dark stained area for me, I'd appreciate it. Because I will show you, here and now, what the dark substance is. Sheena, sorry to do this, but I'm gonna have to cut off a bit of your coat. Go ahead. I wasn't planning to wear it anymore anyway. Now then, if someone could loan me a lighter or something. Oh, I've got one some matches! I always carry them with me so I can light smoke bombs! Then if I could please have one, Kay, we can get this experiment underway. Let me have one of your smoke bombs. The flame! It's the same color as the flames Whip Crystal Oil produces. Which means... Barbalee's ink is a product of Witch Crystal Oil. And when lit, the ink produces a green flame. Hmm. <laughs> I believe the time has come to clip the Yatagarasu's other wing. Mishina, you're the fake Yatagarasu! The one who killed my father! It's about time you came clean, Agent Sheena. Or should I say, Callisto you? Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, you're not serious, are you? Do I look like the joking type to you? <laughs> Callisto you? I've never heard that name before in my life. That manner of speaking, and that attitude. You haven't changed a bit in seven years. You're the defense attorney that killed Mr. Faraday and then tried to frame me for it! Oh, really? And you have proof? You insist that I am this Callisto you woman, but you can't prove it. If you have no proof, then I'm afraid you won't be able to lay a single finger on me. The raven is a very unique bird, one that flies with the darkness of night. However, the light of dawn has arrived, and it will reveal your true ugly form to the world. Enough poetry. I want to see some evidence. Do you really have something that can prove she is Callisto Yu? I do. 
It's something that the second Yatagarasu has preserved for us these last seven years. Do me the honor, Mr. Edgeworth. I will, Kay. For we have finally come to the end. We'll prove her to be Callisto Yu with this, and clip the Yatagarasu's wings for good. The Yatagarasu's key? That's a very good question. I have- oh. Take this perfume. This will prove for you to be Callisto Yu. It will? Kay has reserved it perfectly for us. Surely you remember this bottle. This belonged to Miss Yu just before she disappeared seven years ago. Naturally, this means that a few of her fingerprints are on here as well. This is the bottle of perfume you spilled, which I have preserved ever since. I heard from my father, Burn Faraday, that it's stored- that if stored under the right conditions, a fingerprint can be preserved for decades. Which means that your fingerprints are still on here. Every last one! We can clear everything up if we were to compare the prints on this to your own. Now come, Agent Sheena. Will you submit yourself to a fingerprint test? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ. She's gone insane. Jeez. It looks like you've seen right through me yet again. <laughs> You're setting the biggest chill to my spine, Edgeworth. Callisto, you... So you've shown your true face at last. This feeling of thrill is even greater than that time seven years ago. Sheena, you're... Lang, I really enjoyed our days together. You're an insanely strong, nice, kind-hearted idiot of a man. So you were a spy all along? A mole sent by the smuggling ring I've been chasing after? Someone who has been feeding them intel on Interpol all this time? <laughs> Very good! Maybe you're not as big of an idiot as I thought. Callisto, you! The woman who killed my father seven years ago! You're her, aren't you? The fake Yadagarasu! That's right. Callisto, you! That's just one of my many names. But even that is just a facade. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Great Thief Yadagarasu. Callisto, you. This time you won't escape, for this is the end of the road for you. Now come along quietly. You know, you're the one who left the strongest impression on me, Kay Faraday. And had you not used the Yadagarasu's gadgets, I might have never known who you were. But here you are, being a thorn in my side, just like your father always was. Kay, don't! You! I'll never forgive you for what you did to my father! <laughs> you really are just like him. Mr. Faraday, too, possessed such laughable honesty. <gasps> Kay! Ah! Don't let Kay go right now, pal! You're despicable! Let go of me, you filthy- ah! You think I'm a fake, don't you? Well, unfortunately for you, I'm the real Gatagarasu. That's impossible! My father was the one who created Little Thief! <laughs> hey, Edgeworth! The Gatagarasu has three legs. Do you know why that is? Why it has three legs? There are three main reasons why the Yadagarasu will always be one step ahead. First, the Yadagarasu always knows the exact location of the target object. Second, the Yadagarasu always knows exactly how to disarm the security system. No, it can't be. Did you finally figure it out? Do you finally know who the real identity of the Yatagarasu is? The real identity of the Yatagarasu is... The real identity of the Yatagarasu is neither Burn Faraday nor Callisto Yu. But by the same token, they are also both the real Yatagarasu. <laughs> How very perceptive of you! No way! The single person known as the Great Thief Yatagarasu never existed. Mr. Edgeworth, I... No! I refuse to believe this! The Yatagarasu is known to have three special skills. Skill number one. The Yatagarasu always knows the exact location of the target object. And a lawyer would have the opportunity to learn the layout of client or corporations. Skill number two. 
The Atagarasu always knows exactly how to design the security system. And a good prosecutor would be well versed in the ways of a criminal. And skill number three. The Atagarasu doesn't leave a single shred of evidence behind. Ever. Bad! Detective Bad! It was only natural for the Atagarasu to never leave evidence behind. Because the lead detective on the case hid it all away. Y you're the third member of the Atagarasu? You. I've been looking for you for a long time. Seven long years. But I finally got you. <laughs> Why, Mr. Bad, long time no see! What happened to us? We used to be such a great team. If you were such a great team, then why did you kill my father seven years ago? <laughs> why, indeed. It was nothing personal, really. It was just another person I had to kill. How can you say that? I go weary of this, and it's about time for everything to come to an end. And this time, I won't miss. Stop! You! Kay! It's over, Sheena. Your leg! Yeah! Ancient thing! Uh. You idiot! What were you thinking jumping in front of my gun like that? What are you risking your life for? I'm sorry, Detective Bad, but no matter what sort of past she may have had, or even if she is a spy, it doesn't change the fact that she is my subordinate. And as long as she is, I can't allow any harm to come to her, not even from you. You really are an idiot, you know that? Ha! That's fine with me. You should know by now that this is just how I am. Hey, sis. Yes? I want you to conduct a full body search. Sheena might have another weapon on her. All right. Detective Gumshoe, your assistance, please. Sir! Hey, I found something! What is this, sir? It looks like the blade of a knife, but it doesn't have a handle. This is a great find, Detective. Huh? It is, sir? Let's try pairing this up with the blade and this handle. I believe this blade actually belongs with the handle that was on the murder weapon. Hey, they fit together perfectly! This blade must have been taken from the crime scene when the knife handles were switched. I'm gonna go return this Babali's knife now! Alright. I trust that you'll make sure that it is returned to Ambassador Palaino. I believe this makes it perfectly clear who did it. Callisto, you? For the only time the handles could have been switched is just after Mr. Coton's murder. <laughs> Which means that you must be Mr. Coton's killer. You killed Mr. Coton with the Alabastian knife. Switched the handles and then took the original blade of the Bobbley's knife with you. Later, you allowed yourself to be spotted by Kay near the open air stage. You used the fireplace to lose her, and then you went back to accuse her of the murder. Does that about sum it up? <laughs> you craft an engaging tale, Edgeworth, but there are two problems with it. Problems? In what respect? Why do you think my real reason uh, was in allowing her to chase after me? <laughs> it was also I could catch her Kay Faraday. What? When I saw you using that device at Gatewaterland, I knew right away that you were Burn Faraday's daughter. <laughs> I became curious, so I researched a little bit into your background. That's how I found out that you were one of the tr that you were on the trail of the Atagarasu. So that's why you tried to pin Mr. Cochin's murder on me. Yes, I knew I knew that you would show up at this embassy tonight. So I thought to use you, but pinning the murder on you wasn't my only goal. You had another. <laughs> yes. Once I had you under arrest, I plan to search you and take back the device that right belief belongs to me, the true Yadagarasu. You were going to take Little Thief away from me? Seven years ago, it was thanks to that device that Faraday was able to infiltrate this place. But he stole more than he should have. I had a tough time recovering that precious key. Then the person who stole the Yadagarasu's key was Mr. Faraday? You. That incident seven years ago. What was the catalyst behind it? In the eyes of the smuggling ring, the Atagarasu was becoming a bit of a problem. It wasn't an especially pleasant assignment. Then why? Why did you become a member of the Atagarasu? Why? There is no why. 
I was destined to betray everyone from the very beginning. From the beginning? What is that supposed to mean? The person I take orders from hasn't changed, even now to this day. Does this mean that the leader of the smuggling ring wasn't Mr. Cochin? Then the real ringleader is still out there pulling the strings. Are you done asking what you need to know? Because if so, we should probably get going. And you're gonna tell me everything you did tonight. Do you understand, Sheena? I guess I should tell you then, that I was the one who set the Babali's embassy on fire. And why did you do that? <laughs> I suppose it was to destroy all evidence of the counterfeit bills. That was the smuggling ring- that was what was sm the smuggling ring was trying to do? But then why start two fires? Sorry, but I can't tell you anything about the ring. It's your job to complete your investigation after all. I've had my turn. Now, it's your turn to enjoy the ride. Wait! I mean, Miss Sheena! Yes? When I fell to the floor earlier, these fell at my feet. What about them? They're such pretty hair sticks that I thought, well, that I should return them to you. <laughs> you can have them. They're of no use to me anymore. If you don't want them, you can always just throw them away. No, I want to keep them. <laughs> Suit yourself. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot, Edgeworth. Hmm? About the second problem I have with your story. I didn't kill anyone tonight. What? I'm not saying that as a sore loser. Think of it as a hint, if you will. Mr. Prosecutor! Yes, Agent Lang? Mark my words, I'm not done here, and I'll be back. And it's got nothing to do with my duty or anything, because this has become my personal case. I may have been shot. But I'll show you just how dangerous a wounded wolf can be. His anger appears to have negated the sensation of pain in his injured leg. It's finally over, Kay. I feel like I've peered into her heart a little, you know? And it's so cold, and dark, and incredibly lonely. The person who was giving her all these commands. The one who thought my father was a problem to be removed. That person is the real ling ringleader behind the smuggling ring. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I have a favor to ask. Can you hold on to these hair sticks for me? They're really pretty, just like the ones we they were selling for the Jam and Ninja show. But until this case is over, I don't think I can look at them without being overcome. I understand. I'll take good care of them for you. Hmm? There was a bit of soil stuck to on the ends of these sticks. Oh, I guess it's that time already, huh? So it's midnight, the dawn of another day. Hey, Bobs! Thanks a bunch! You really done a lot for me all these years. Detective Bad, don't tell me today is the day. Yeah, it is. With this, I can retire in peace. It was down to the wire, and we almost didn't make it. But we did it. We solved everything. But that's just it. We haven't solved everything yet. The ringleader of the smuggling ring, you, the Yatagarasu, were chasing after. The legend of that Yatagarasu is now over. Mr. Edgeworth, a bit of logic earlier. It was brilliant. I feel like I can leave it all in your hands. I'm counting on you. Is it really true, Uncle Bad? Were you also part of the Yatagarasu? As I said to you earlier, Kay, I'm truly sorry. I wanted... Nothing but a peaceful life for you. Uncle Bad. Hey, don't take it so seriously. It's not just one big joke, right? Unfortunately, it isn't. Oh, come on, sir. She's just yanking out my chain, isn't she, Mr. Edgeworth? Detective Bad. Wait, no. You are no longer a detective. Mr. Bad, I'd like to speak to you about the Atagarasu. Not you too, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth, here. I should give these back to you. These are... The pages from my KG-8 case files that the Autograsu stole from my office! Huh? Wait... What?! Mr. Edgeworth, I must apologize for last night. Was that bad? So the Autograsu who stole into my room was you, was it? Wait, then that means... What?! To tell me it's not true?! But that's too unsafe for me to believe, sir! It's true. Even if it's not something you want to hear. 
The KG-8 incident. It was a very emotionally trying case. We stood in that courtroom, Faraday as the prosecutor, and I as the lead detective. Faraday had evidence in his possession, and that would prove the defendant guilty. However, because it was stolen, the defendant was found innocent. You was the elder sister of the victim in the case. When the defendant was pronounced not guilty, she let out a great wail. That's when we realized that there was a limit to what the law could do. The only way to bring someone like that to justice was to do so outside of the courts. That's what we thought at the time. That's how we formed the Adagarasu and vowed to bring to light any dirty dealings companies had with the ring, including companies that dealt with the Amano Group. Mr. Amano's conglomerate? We called ourselves the Adagarasu and flexed our collective muscle. We exposed all sorts of shady dealings as a warning to the business world as a whole. By doing that, we were able to stop the higher-ups from covering things up. And then, it was finally time. We had finally arrived at the moment when we find out the ringleader's true identity. It was then that you literally stabbed us in the heart, and Faraday, he died for it. But why? Wasn't she the sister of the victim in the KG-8 incident? After Faraday's death, I looked into her past, and that's when I found out that she was a phony. The victim of the KG-8 incident, CCU, she never had a sister. What? Then that means... Sheena wasn't the only fake name she used. Callisto Yu was also another pseudonym. From the very beginning, that woman was a spy sent by the smuggling ring. She said it herself. I was destined to betray everyone from the very beginning. Anyway, let's return to the real topic at hand. Mr. Edgeworth. This trump card that we stuck onto the page of this case file. Please use it wisely. Trump card? That photo we stuck on there. Try peeling it off. Behind it, slumbers a piece of evidence that Faraday hid away all those years ago. It's the mark of the Adagarasu, but why? This is... a directive's card from the big boss. Take a look at the back. This was something Cochin had on him at the time of the KG-8 incident, seven, ten years ago. That blood is from the victim of the incident, Miss CCU. But why is the card adorned with the mark of the Yatagarasu? The reason why we call ourselves the Yatagarasu was because of the three-legged raven mark that the smuggling ring's boss used. Apparently, orders from the boss would come on these cards without fail. The person who received the order was supposed to burn it immediately after reading it. And apparently, it burns a bright green flame when set ablaze. So you mean, the cards were written in Bobbly's ink? The fact that the card was that Mr. Cochin was sent made it into Faraday's hand at all is nothing short of a miracle. We decided that whenever we stole anything, we would send a card along with it to the police. So that's what those white cards are. The great thief that used the mark that only those within the ring would know. It was our message to the ringleader that we were only a few steps behind. And one more thing, Detective Gumshoe. I'm entrusting this to you, my lollipop. What's this, sir? This is what I was talking about earlier. During the KG-8 incident trial, Faraday had this in his possession. This important, definitive piece of evidence. But I thought it was stolen. How do you have it? The person who stole it from us, ten years ago, was a man by the name of Ernest Amano. And he had it locked and hidden away for all this time. But we forced him to tell us where it was, finally, after the other day's kidnapping case. This video! Don't come any closer! I'm warning you! 
This is the same video as the one Mr. Portsman was trying to conceal, fr conceal from me. Yeah, it would seem that even he was caught up in the ring's web. Amana was preparing to take on the boss someday, and the video was his insurance. That's where that prosecutor comes in. He was to retrieve the video. On top of that, he was apparently instructed to sneak into your office and steal the trump card. You saw it for yourself, right? The card that told him to preserve the evidence. Then, that card was not the calling card of the Autogorosu, but rather a directives card from the ringleader to Mr. Portsman? The two pieces together make for a strong weapon for whoever holds them. The evidence Mr. Portsman thought to withhold from me, and the one that you stole from my office last night. Both pieces are illegal, and for me to use either one is... Whether you use them or not is up to you. But they will be of help to you when you take on someone who is above the law. Is the boss one of those who cannot be brought to court that Mr. Faraday spoke of? Detective Bad. There is no limit to the law, for it is the people who determine the limits to them. You still insist that, even now, you really are something else. I leave the rest in your hands. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, the handcuffs. It's time to lock up the last remaining member of the Yadagarasu. Pops! Don't ever lose your detective spirit. Uh, Pops! Why is this happening? This isn't justice! Like I always told you, do not get emotionally involved. Now let's go. Yes, sir! Is this really the end of a legend? Shit. Man. Whoa. Now my question is, why the heck are we still here? <laughs> this is middle part three. This is middle part three. There is an ending part to this. Why the- why are we still here? This feels like a really great, like, ending? If we had another case, maybe, I don't know. This feels like a really weird ending if the thing were to end here, because then it wouldn't be a happy ending. But then also, like, what the heck are we gonna do after this? Are we gonna search for, like, the ringleader? But, like, where- where do we even find him? Where do we even find them? You know, like... Man, okay, um... That's a lot. That is it for this episode. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. See what we're gonna do. Roll the end card. Objection! You haven't hit like and subscribe yet! Hold it! You forgot to ring the bell to get notified whenever I upload! Take that! Click here to watch more of my videos! Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next time!